Take one. Welcome to the Open Pepper Breeding Channel. Today we're looking at our F1 plants for the community project. So these are the first generation after a cross of two parents. And uh, they're being grown to produce F2 seed. And uh, then we're going to take these F2 seeds and we're going to distribute it to all of our participants. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, I encourage you to check out reddit.com slash r slash pepperbreeding. There you'll find two sticky threads with a bunch more information. Or you can just navigate to the comments of this video. So we're looking at PA001. So this is our Bacatum by Bacatum cross as opposed to Chinense or Anum, the two other common domesticated pepper species. So this is being grown to produce a pink version of the Brazilian starfish. And this is a cross of yellow Brazilian starfish and sugar rush peach. So as you can see, we're getting some of the uh, features of both parents in these F1 plants. Uh, the peppers are much shorter as compared to sugar rush peach. Uh, that is a kind of a reduced pepper length trait coming out of Brazilian starfish. And you can also see a constriction at the end of the pepper, also coming from Brazilian starfish. And then we have some of the uh, highly accentuated lobes that you see in Brazilian starfish as well. So these are three dominant traits that we're looking at. But within this plant, there's numerous other recessive traits. Uh, hopefully recessive traits for things like high sugar content and uh, a better architecture than Brazilian starfish. So anyways, uh, unfortunately we don't have any ripe fruit yet. So uh, let's move on to some other plants where we do. So this plant is Fidalgo Roja cross to Ahi Charapita. So this cross was made to breed a pink Ahi Charapita. And uh, as you can see, we've got a beautiful dark uh, purple leaf, and that's caused by anthocyanin uh, coming out of Fidalgo Roja. And uh, we've got a small fruit shape, and so that's going to be in all the F1s today. That's a dominant trait at Ahi Charapita. Uh, the peppers are ripening to a mature red coloration. And that's because Fidalgo Roja has the red gene. The reason Fidalgo Roja appears as peach is because there's another recessive gene for a reduced accumulation of carotenoid pigments. And so that's something that we'll have to find in the F2 generation when some of these recess recessive traits are expressed. The plant has a beautiful architecture. You can see we've got, you know, four strong growing points and all of the secondary, tertiary, and so on and so forth nodes are growing out well. And uh, there's absolutely just a huge load of uh, fruit on here for me to harvest. So a week ago I picked the first five fruit off of this plant and then left the rest to ripen. And so that's what I'm left with today uh, for harvest this weekend. Beautiful plant. Looking forward to the F2s. So that's PA006, Fidalgo Roja by Ahi Charapita. And then we also have the reciprocal of the cross. And so reciprocal is just the same cross in another direction. And we do this because uh, you have a nuclear genome, and that's in the nucleus. And that's the traditional, you know, you get half from your mom, half from your father. But there also is a plastid genome, and that comes from the mother. And so while these plants are genetical in terms of their nuclear genetics, uh, that plastid genome can vary. And sometimes it can have some really interesting and useful effects on the plants. And so we, when we can, we like to do the reciprocal cross as well. And so this plant here is Ahi Charapita as the mother, whereas in the other it was the father or the pollen donor. And uh, the fruit shape is, you know, exactly the same as we saw in the other plant. It's small and ripening to a red color. And then one trait I wanted to show you is this bulge that appears in these uh, fruit. And so that must be a dominant trait coming out of Fidelgo Roja. And so that's something that we're going to see in the F2 quite commonly. We would expect it about 75% of the time. So there you have it, two very beautiful plants coming out of Fidalgo Roja and Ahi Charapita. And uh, again, these seeds will be going out to you guys uh, very soon. In fact, after this video, I'm going to harvest them, and then I'll dry them for four days. I'll start packaging them up and getting them out to you guys. So with that, let's take a look at the uh, next set of plants here. So this is PA002, PA003, the crosses of Habanada and Ahi Charapita. And so these crosses were made to transfer a capsinoid knockout gene into our F2 progeny. And that's going to be a recessive trait coming out of Habanada. And so again, you can see we have fruit that are ripening to red. As you can see. Uh, these plants have been a little bit further behind than the rest of the guys, but uh, they're producing plenty of seed for our purposes here. Um, the architecture of the plant leave something to be desired as compared to the last plant where you had four really strong growing sectors this one kind of 
did that first bifurcation and then only grew one half of the bifurcation. And so we got left with this lopsided architecture. And uh, that occurred in both plants. And so I'm right now I'm chalking that up to genetics as opposed to environment. But uh, we'll see in the F2s. Uh, we should know pretty quickly whether this is something that we're going to have a problem with or something that's just, you know, a freak coincidence. Anyways, let's take a, take a look at the fruit here. So they look a lot like the other one. Uh, they don't quite have that same prominent bulge around the midsection. Uh, they're, you know, they're squat and they're round. And uh, if you look down on the top down view, you kind of have, you know, more pronounced lobing going on. And so that must have come out of habanada. And so that's going to make some interesting plants in the F2. So yeah, stay tuned on this guy. So these F1 plants are the cross to Shiro Roja by SC, and that's one parent, cross to Ahi Charapita. And when I made the cross, the F1 segregated for purple leaves and green. And so what I've done is taken one purple and one green from each of these different uh, sides of the reciprocal cross. So for these, I have four plants to show per parent versus the two, pa two plants that I have showed you. And uh, if you look at the plants here, they are absolutely just loaded down with fruit. There's tons and tons and tons of fruit here. Look at all this, guys. And so these all ripened since last weekend. This is just one week's worth of uh, fruit ripening up. And uh, you can see we kind of have a very similar fruit shape. These are a bit longer, and they got more of like a tapered, pointed fruit tip. And so we're getting a lot of diversity in the fruit shape in our, our F1 plants here. So uh, we'll have some really interesting things to look at in the F2. Uh, this this family, these two families really have been my problem children. And uh, these plants actually, they're setting way too many fruit, I believe. And uh, we'll see if that bears out in the F2. But uh, just an absolute ton, a ton of seeds. But uh, even though I hate these plants, they do have the best flavor out of uh, all the families so far. That probably doesn't mean much because in the F2 you get all those unique combinations. But uh, they're definitely starting from a good point, at least for flavor, not so much for architecture. And so uh, we're going to take a look at the other two plants that go with these two families now. So these two plants are the other two plants that go with the cross of Shira Roja by SC, cross to Ahi Charapita. And again, you can see we don't really have you know that great of an architecture. In fact, in this F1, the architecture is just absolutely abysmal. You know, it almost looks like a plus sign rather than a nice filled out plant. And uh, I think I'm actually just going to cull this plant. I don't think I'm ever going to share seeds with it, uh, unfortunately. I just think it's starting from too bad a place. As you can see, it's got the same fruit shape as all the other plants, and that's kind of a tapering towards the tip, you know, a pointed apex kind of shape here. And then there's the other guy, much the same story, has a bit better of an architecture but it uh, has the same fruit shape. And if you look at the uh, fruit evaluation data that's available on the subreddit, you'll see that all four of these plants are within kind of the same range for their values. So I don't think we're gonna lose much by uh, culling the guy on the right, and it's gonna give me a little bit of joy when I get to do it. Uh, but anyways, you know, that's why we grow multiple plants. That way you can get rid of one and pick the better of the two. Ideally, you'd pick the better of the 4,000, but you know, that's why we're distributing seeds to so many people. Somebody's going to get lucky and get that absolutely amazing plant. And uh, we have one more plant to show you here, so hold on for that. All right, so this is the last plant. This is uh, PA008, and so this is Pink Habanero Long, crossed Ahi Charpita. And I have not tasted these fruit yet. And I evaluated the, uh, all the other plants last weekend. I couldn't quite get three mature peppers, so I decided to wait. But uh, look at that. We got three peppers that are close enough that I'm going to evaluate them right after this video. So you can see we got really pretty peppers. They're kind of a, they're the, the normal green, maybe a little bit on the darker side. Um, beautiful, shiny uh, exocarp. And uh, I kind of like the architecture on this guy. So it's not that real strong fractal shape that you get out of some of the Chinense, especially Ahi Charpita, if you've ever seen that grown out. Uh, it's got more of a spreading architecture, you know, it did that first bifurcation and then I guess what happened is the apical dominance, and that's what keeps it from branching, was reduced. And uh, we got a bunch of kind of, you know, secondary lateral branching going on. 
and it happened early on and it was in a controlled enough way that we got you know a fairly nice plant out of it so i'm really personally looking forward to the f2 and this guy and uh, this isn't a capsinoid knockout but it's a capsinoid reduction and uh, that's a recessive trait so that's something we're going to be looking for in the f2 so if you're interested in growing out a pepper that could be potentially you know very mild this will be one worth growing out and so you know we expect 25 percent of the f2s to be that really reduced uh, capsinoid mutation so if you're feeling lucky you know grow out six or ten of these plants and you'll get one you'll get one so there you go looking forward to eating these guys and uh I alluded to it in another video, but I do have fruit evaluation data for all these F1s available on uh, the uh, Reddit, uh, our pepper breeding subreddit. So uh, look into that if you're curious. And uh, as always, there's a bunch of good discussion ongoing, not just about these projects, but uh, all the other individual member projects. So uh, come check us out. There's uh, some links in the uh, description where you can find us. And I wanted to say thanks. And if you got a moment, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It, uh, it helps us with uh, YouTube's algorithms. So I appreciate that. And uh, they'll probably got one more uh, video in this F1 series. And then I'm going to have to clean up and get started for the F2. So, uh, you know, it'll kind of be a bittersweet farewell. I've spent almost six months with these plants. But uh, you can't see it. But in that fruit right there, that one right there, there's a bunch of F2 seeds. And I'm going to grow those out and kill them all. Anyways, thank you guys. I know these videos are long and boring as hell, but I appreciate you watching them. And I hope you learned something, you know. Thank you. See you guys later.